Hi, my name is Colbert and let's start with Blackchain. This is a very nice old-fashioned StarCraft inspired RTS that will take only a few hours to finish. Here you'll be thrown to a year of 2088, where the solar system is ruled by those who can exploit it most efficiently. Blackchain includes a classic campaign across the solar system with 12 unique story missions, with full voice acting, base building, land and air combat and skirmish mode versus AI. Also a LAN multiplayer with two human players, map editor and custom games. Sadly, there is only one faction available, but keep in mind that Blackchain is made only by one dude, and it's super cheap. You may say, hey, my sister is even cheaper. But come on, it's not a competition. Detroit Become Human This is a decision-making game. Everything you do will have consequences and dramatically alter how the game's intense, branching narrative plays out. It has so many different outcomes that no matter what you choose, you will get awarded with a continuous story. Well, or with failure after failure, just like in your real life, but here you can load the game and try again, and again, and again, until you get the outcome you really want, and then pretend that you got it in your first try. Anyway, in this game, no playthrough will be exactly the same. It has multiple endings on all three available storylines. Well, let's be honest, you probably play this game only once, but it's nice to know that the ending you got, it's probably kinda unique. Dead Cells Overwhelmingly positive reviews should lock your attention even if you don't like pixel art graphics. And this game can stand strong behind the name of the style. It's true art. The game is really beautiful, just like you, my friend. But graphics are just one side of a coin. People on Steam are talking that this roguelite metroidvania is probably the best game of the genre. Along with the graphics, you will get great music and a gameplay more addictive than vodka. If you wake up in the morning, your hands are trembling and all you want is to play Dead Cells, you are that celloholic, please don't seek help. Gaming is good for you. Magica 2. You can play this alone or you can play Magica 2 with friends, which is way better experience. Playing Magic alone is like eating marinated herring alone, without onions, hot potatoes and a shot of crystal clear expensive vodka. If you have a friend, make him play Magica with you. Just call your friend and say, Hey friend, take your laptop and come to my place, here is party with girls. He will laugh in your face, because you are both virgins and he will come anyway, so you can play together for a long time. Expeditions Rome. What is this? And by this I mean that Expeditions Rome is not even released yet, and it's already on sale. I don't know if that's a good sign to be fair. Previously I was pretty much sure that this game would be a gem, but now I think that they are not confident with what they have made. You know, after the initial release, the world travels fast, and if you made a good game, you don't need a discount for people to buy it. Anyway, let's hope that everything is alright. You'll create your own Roman legacy across three huge campaigns and customer your character's look, gender, class and skills to match your playstyle and role-playing fantasy. Trine 4 The Nightmare Prince I think that many of you have heard about Trine series. It was one of the first hard-worked attempts to make platformer games even more beautiful than they were before. Trine is a member of 3D platformers with fixed camera, or as developers call it, a 2.5D, which is a bit confusing. I ate 2.5 burgers. So you have left a half of one untouched for me? No, I ate all three of them, but I never moved a muscle. So here you'll control three heroes sent on a quest to retrieve the troubled young prince. Wizard, knight and a thief are joined together once again on a thrilling quest through a beautiful fairy tale landscape teeming with danger. People on Steam are talking that this game is simpler than the first two Trine games, puzzles are easier, but when you play in co-op mode with friends, everything is chaos. Also keep in mind that this game will eat your machine's computing power as if you were digging for a bitcoins. Absolo, End of Gods in this future Viking horror, you awaken a sanctuary of steel and concrete, built to research and exploit the worlds of Yggdrasil and to house an artifact buried on Earth aeons ago. Your task is to unveil the secrets of the mythology, the artifacts and the realms of Yggdrasil. Game is pretty scary, but the funny thing is the name, at least for me. As I always say, Absolov to me sounds like a random Slavic surname. I'm not a Slav myself, so I can't really tell, but come on. Hello, I am Dmitry. Absolov from Minsk. I bend metal with my bare hands, and I can bend you over as well. Please don't, Mr. Absolov. Spare me. Game has very positive reviews on Steam, so I can only suggest that you dive into this sci fi Viking horror and have a great time. Yes, yes, bend in. Tales of Neon Sea. 
This is a retro-style pixel art adventure set in a cyberpunk cityscape where you will encounter numerous items to investigate, curious easter eggs and a whole cast of interactive NPCs. You must analyze every detail and discover the truth that lurks behind the heavy mist as you take on the role of Rex, veteran cop turned hard-boiled detective. Investigate crime in a future cyberpunk world where the magnificent sky city blocks the sun, but the neon lights never go out. Just let's hope that he and the police will not spawn down directly behind your back, if you know what I mean. People on Steam are talking that this is a nice relaxing game of gathering clues filled with a cute characters and pets, great visuals and nice music with heavy Blade Runner influence. Some puzzles are kinda tricky and will demand a lot of your brain power, so be sure you have it before playing. Vaporium this is a grid-based single-player and single-character dungeon crawler RPG set in an original steampunk setting. The game is obviously inspired by old-school games like Dungeon Master, The Eye of the Beholder series and the most recent Legend of Grimrock. Stranded in the middle of the ocean in front of gigantic tower, you have to find out what this place is, what happened here and most importantly, who you are and where the secret vodka stash is. The game looks beautiful, so if you are into dungeon crawlers, keep in mind that this one has very positive reviews on Steam and is a true gem for your collection. Well, fairies. Your metal detector should be beeping like hell right now because Valferis is an amazing platformer game with a true metal soul. Reviews are very positive, so no cash in here, you can buy this game even without a discount and you will be satisfied with what you get. And you will get metal. And a game, two in one, you know, like a shampoo and conditioner or, or you and your virginity. And if you like Valferis, you can check out a game named Slain as well, made by the same developers. It also has metal soul, but slightly worse review score. People and Steam are talking that Valferis is what they expected the new modern Contra game to be. Pure sci-fi power fantasy with an incredibly good soundtrack and game atmosphere. Avon Colony Discover Avon Prime, an alien planet of deserts, tundras and jungles light years from Earth. Game puts you in charge of humanity's first extrasolar settlement, where you build and expand your small colonies into massive, sprawling cities while dealing with the challenges on a new world and that feels great. Of course, not everyone thinks like that, the arrows of criticism are sharp and penetrate even the best expectations. People are saying that optimization is so bad that even the fattest man would run better than this game does. Anyway, recent reviews are more mostly positive and the price is nice. Song of Horror Complete Edition Long time ago I went to the movie theater to watch the horror movie called The Ring, and after it I was so terrified of horror movies in general that I avoided them for nearly 15 years. Yeah, I'm not alone in that field, I know tons of people who can't watch horror as well after they watch The Ring or The Grudge, but now I am enjoying horror films without any stupid inner fear. So what has changed? I started to watch other people playing horror games, and then occasionally I tried one or two by myself, and suddenly all my instinctive bone-chilling fear was gone. I can finally watch horror movies and have fun because they can't surprise me anymore. I've seen everything in games already. So horror games have cured my phobia. Well, mostly. I'm still afraid during the movie, but not after it. Anyway, enough inspiring speeches. Let's talk about the song of horror. Yeah, the famed writer Sebastian Husher has gone missing, along with his entire family. Worried, an editor sent an assistant to his house in order to look for him, but he never came back. These disappearances spark a set of events that will soon reveal something dreadful. A nameless dark entity known only as the Presence seems to be responsible. And you know, you have to deal with it. Pfft, easy. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more videos like that, and if you are already subscribed, click that notifications bell. Only then YouTube will inform you about the new videos I have made. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time.